Before we begin this art project, let's try and get into the mindset of collecting things from the beach. If you have some items that you've collected from the beach, now would be a great time to grab those and that way you have some inspiration before we get started. If you don't have any items, that's okay too. You can always pause the video or search on the internet for some examples or just use your imagination. Remember, you can always pause the video at any time. Here are the supplies you'll need for this project. I'm also going to encourage you to ask either a family member, a parent, an older sibling for help before you do anything with the stove or the oven. As you can see in this picture, you can also use the cardboard from old paper towels as a rolling pin. If you don't have a pencil, you can use a paper clip. There are lots of ways to improvise before we get started. You will also need cornstarch. After you place your pot on the stove, do not turn it on yet. You are going to place two cups of baking soda into the pot. Next, add one cup of cornstarch. And for our last ingredient, water. You'll need to add one and one fourth cups. Now is when you would want to ask a parent for help. Turn on the stove to medium heat and begin stirring your mixture until it's about the consistency of mashed potatoes. This might take a little longer depending on your stove. For me, it took about four minutes for the thickness to really start coming together. Once the dough has thickened up to the consistency of mashed potatoes, take your pot off of the heat. Then grab your pan, make sure it's covered in parchment paper, and then add your dough to the pan. This will need to be scooped out carefully, so it might be a good idea to ask a parent for help. You'll need to use a wet paper towel to cover the dough while it's resting and while it's cooling. So wet a paper towel and gently squeeze until you get most of the water out. Then carefully unfold your paper towel and cover your dough. While we're waiting, you can clean up your pot by adding a little bit of warm water and letting it sit in the sink. Then preheat your oven to 175. Once the dough is cool enough to handle, take the paper towels off the dough and lay them to the side. Then we will need to knead our dough. I like to move to a new area of my parchment paper or you can get a new piece of parchment paper, either way is fine. We are focusing on the executive functioning skill of flexibility. If your dough is too dry, you'll need to add a little bit of water. If it's too wet and sticking to yourself and everything else, then you'll need to add a little bit of starch. 
Next, you'll want to roll your dough into about one half inch thickness, or about the thickness of your finger. I like to use my roller starting at the center and working my way out. You also want to change the direction every now and then. And you'll also see me flip the dough so it doesn't get stuck to the parchment paper. Now, if you have cookie cutters, it would be a good time to use those. I like to start closer to the edge, that way I have a lot of room to do other things later on with the dough. I am going to create two small circles for my sand dollars. You want to make sure these are about the thickness of your finger, so I like to hold it up to my hand and make sure it's about one half inch thick or about the thickness of my finger. It's almost always better to be too thick with your dough than too thin, but if you want it a little more thin for the next sand dollar, you can take your rolling pin and roll out the dough a little bit more. Next, we will need five small pieces for our starfish. So, Take as much as you think you'll need, about half the size of my palm, and then I'll need five of these equal pieces. For the seashell, we will need one larger piece and one smaller rectangle. So tear off a little larger than what we just used for our starfish and then roll it into a ball. You'll need two sizes, one large and one small. With the extra dough, you can roll it into a ball and then cover it with a wet paper towel. We can use this later on for details or making more objects. Then we will need to make five teardrop shapes for our starfish. So first you wanna grab one of your pieces and gently roll into your hand. Roll the dough back and forth between your palms or if you find it easier, you can lay this on your baking sheet and roll that way. I wanna make sure that I'm using my fingers gently to pull so it's a little bit longer and then I can use my palm to either tap a flat edge or my baking sheet to tap a flat edge. Next, you want to stick all your pieces together, making sure they're overlapping. Then, take a little bit of water on your finger and smooth these pieces together. I like to make sure I'm going all different directions and smoothing out any cracks that I'm seeing. Next, we can add details. I like to use a paper clip, but you can also use a pencil or any other sharp objects to make your holes. You can either just go halfway into your starfish or poke all the way to your baking sheet. If you know you wanna hang these later on, then it would be a good idea to make the hole all the way through to your baking sheet. Now for the seashell, I need to make a rectangle shape for the bottom part of my seashell. 
Using the same process I used for my starfish, I am going to make a small rectangle, flattening out both sides and then even using my fingers to make sure it's even more flat. Then for the main part of my seashell, I need to make a large oval that tapers at the bottom. So first roll, then pat in between your hands or even on your baking sheet to make a pancake shape. Then gently squeeze the bottom to make sure that it's not coming to a complete point, but it's curved towards the edge and then pointed at the bottom. Now that you have the main shape for your seashell, you can add your details. Taking a pencil or a paper clip, draw in your lines on your seashell. Be careful with your pressure here. Now for the sand dollars, Gently use your palm to smooth out both sides. This will make them a little more flat. Then take a dotted technique with a paper clip to make your flowers. I find this easier than trying to draw. If you know you will want to hang these later on, it's a good idea to make a hole, again, not too close to the edge. Also, sand dollars do naturally have holes, so I'm going to add a few more. Any cracks you're seeing, it's a good idea to smooth these out with water. They will show up exactly as they are when they come out of the oven. Now you're ready to bake. Make sure you ask a parent for help. These will take about one hour, but it depends on the oven. So set your timer for one hour, and it might be a little longer, but make sure you're checking on these. They should slightly change in color. After the hour and you know that they're baked, have a parent help you with removing these from the oven. They will need to sit out for a while and cool before you add any other details like painting or tying twine around them, but they're all done just as they are. If you do decide you want to hang these, make sure you use a twine or a really sturdy string. You wanna make sure that they don't fall. These can be really fragile, so it might also be a good idea to just lay them on a table. Thank you for watching and make sure you share what you made.